Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a digital rebar training presented by our founder and CTO, Greg Althaus. In this section specifically, he dives into classification and how that can be used in universal workflow. Very helpful, important materials. Enjoy. Um, the classifier is a content pack that provides the ability to inspect the machine and set and change certain values, okay? Um, this allows the, um, system to automatically discover and take actions on things. The universal workflow has pieces of this already and uses it for certain use cases like automatically applying content to run. It does some hardware based um, evaluation based upon profile names and product names. The thing you ask for is separate and different from that. So that's why we'll be building one or working to build one here over time. And it works on a system of um, a test actions and then a continuation. So you could kind of think of it like a um, Oh, firewall rules where if it matches a firewall rule, unless you tell it, it will stop there. Um, the idea is that you do a test. If the machine applies to the test, it will then apply the actions to that um, machine. And then depending on whether that stanza has continued true or not, it will move on to the next tests and keep going. If continue is false or unspecified, which defaults to false, then a match of a test will cause the classifier to stop and say, okay, we've classified this machine enough, let's move on to something else, okay? An example um, that the classifier has built into it is has Mac. So it'll say, does this, if this Mac address is here, then we're going to set the host name parameter. We're going to add this application value and potentially add these other profiles. And we may choose to have it continue because while this may be a specific machine, we may also want to do things like subnet matching or some other higher level classification that we may want to apply something as well. Classifiers can change workflows um, as an example of an action. Now, in the universal workflow, the classifier has been extended to be um, parameter driven and that's what we're going to start looking at um, and then I sent you the example document for the um, beginning of the document for universal workflow it needs a lot of help the specific pieces that we're going to talk about are from the use case you guys described what you want to be able to do is based upon a machine showing up have the discovery process classify a machine into a certain pool. Now we'll see if that works because I'm thinking our security models may be a little too tight for this use case. And so we'll need to think about how we want to alter those and update the product for that. Because pooling wasn't necessarily something to auto classify, though it makes total sense now. So we may be adding an update to the product for that as a result of this meeting. Um, but the idea is the universal workflow has a classifier in it that is currently defined by the contents of the base classifier. There's two ways to extend this. We could chain some classifiers together or we could extend the existing one. And I think what we'll do is we'll um, create a new one and add it to the um, list of classifiers for our use case, okay? Now, to encourage good behavior, 
we're going to do this in iterative development style while building a content pack. I think Mike and Shane have already shown you some of the content pack construction work, and we're going to follow that same kind of procedure. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is, or first thing I was going to ask, can everybody see this in a reasonable fashion or do I need to make it bigger? It's good to me. It's good. Yeah, okay. Too. So what I've done is I've created a content pack, which I'm going to call Geodis. Um, and it's just a pretty empty content pack. Um, if I can type, apparently I can't type. Right, named it Geodis, gave it a version so I can keep track of all the things we change. And I think I even gave it a little description. Um, all sorts of other fields you can fill out. I also put in, in it a little profile that I made available for my containers so that my containers could make it through universal work workflow at the moment. This is mostly just to skip all the hardware stuff that a container doesn't have for the time being. Um, and let us play in a quickly iterative fashion. Um, you could do this with virtual machines as well, but or eventually real hardware. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we're going to, um, because we want to change the discovery process, that has to be done globally. And what I mean by that is, since I don't know anything about the machines, I want to let the discovery process figure out what the machine is just by it showing up. I can't make assumptions about what's on that machine. So I need to be able to alter the um, global discovery state. So I'm going to create a profile. And I'll start with this one as a basis. And I'll call it global discover. And in here, I'm going to call it global discover. And in this case, I'm going to need some parameters or change a parameter. And so if I look at my universal workflow doc, one of the parameters I'm going to need to change is this global discover list. And I have to make it yaml -y, which I could leave like that, but I'm going to Okay, so now that classification list is going to use the base hardware stuff, which I'll still apply. I want to apply, we could remove it, but now I'm going to add Geodis uh, hardware classifier. Okay, so what does that turn into? So that is going to turn into a stage. And you're like, oh, this is a pain. But we're kind of in the middle of building these docs. So we are showing you the full set right now. That turns into a stage. Now, this is a special stage. Stages can define functions that or parameters that are only available to the machine while it's in that stage. Since I have shared classifier code in the content pack, I need to be able to set the specific parameters. So in this case, I'm going to G. Oops. <sighs> okay, so now I'm going to do DRP CLI stages show, and in this case, I want to show 
I'm a firm believer in taking from things that are already working. And we're going to call this, because I'm in the wrong spot, that. So in my content, when I'm building a content pack, when I want to build objects, I basically create the directory of the object type I want to create. In this case, I need to move this to here, and I called it Geodis. And my brain can't keep track of names. So Geodis Hardware Classifier. Okay, so I clean this up a little bit. I get rid of some of the empty fields. Some of the things that you can additionally add on all, pretty much all objects are description. So this is geodis size or hardware classifier. Um, I can even give it metadata to have an icon color in, in the UX. Um, in this case, classifier. Um, in this case, I have those parameters. I can even give it profiles. And then a lot of these fields are just assumed. And then the task I want it to run is classify. Now, that task can be reused because I'm going to set these parameters. So now I need to create my specific new functions that I need and new data elements. So in this case, I'll just call it that, but because I don't want to type it, I'll put it as hardware classifier data and hardware class fire functions. <sighs> okay. So in this case, I've created two new parameters that I need for this. So I'll grab And functions. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to copy some parameters. In this case, I have data. So so I look at this data, uh, let's stick with YAML. I probably want to start with this object or this as the basis, because it's got some schema. Now, if you're not familiar with creating parameters, parameters are the way we do type checking in DRP. It lets us make sure the parameter, uh, parameters are specified correctly and meet the criteria that are needed to let them function within the system. And in this case, we have a schema defined that allow it to say, this is going to be an array of objects that have these fields of these types. And so I think I'm just going to, in this case, copy that as the starting point for my parameter. Now, once this is built, we'll give you this uh, content pack and you won't have to do this work. And like I said, the documentation for this will get better. We just haven't gotten to it recently. So in this case, I'm gonna do DRPCLI params, show that format equal YAML. And in this case, it's Geodis hardware data. So the first thing I always do is um, clean it up. Do 
to make sure I have it the way I want. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. So in this case, geodes. Oh, so one of the things to notice here, notice I am um, kind of creating a namespace in my parameters. So in this case, I'm saying geodes slash and then um, kind of the, the parameter. Um, this way, um, I don't conflict with things. Um, let's see, I'm going to keep the schema. Now, in this case, we're going to change the default here eventually. But this way, I now maintain the data accuracy. Okay. And We'll do the same thing for functions. Okay. And clean up. So why am I doing this with the descriptions and other stuff? Strangely enough, um, the system allows you to classify and then also the UX can display these values as helpers. Um, and then the bundle command also lets you build an RST document out of it so that you can kind of build your own self-documenting pieces. Um, what do I need? Hardware classifier functions. One of the things you'll notice is that the functions are really a are a list of names, um, and they're a list of templates to include inside the classifier. So all this. That is a. Uh, typo geodis uh, in the default section. Ah, thank you. That's great. Thank you for following along. Okay, so um, we'll come back to what these look like here in a second, but um, I'm going to create a placeholder for this template. And lovely, the guy came over and to do weeds right now. Okay. So now I have a placeholder for the template. So if I look at all my files, I can see I have my two parameters defined. I have a place where I'm going to put functions. I have a set of um, a state, um, a stage that's going to be included. And then I've got to find a couple a profile that I'm going to put those pieces in. So one quick last thing. I think I did it already. Geodis, what do I call it? Uh, no, sorry. Prams, Geodis hardware, data, default. OK. So I made that empty. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bundle my content pack. So that's how I do it. If I look at it, I can see it put it all in here. Um, I can then upload that content pack and it becomes available. So then if I look at my systems, I can see that like my stages showed up. There's my Geodis hardware classifier, right? 
and it's got its parameters and its definitions. Right? Yay. So now I'm going to delete these so I can bring them back. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that classifier runs um, all the time. So here's my global discover. And I want to apply it to the global profile so that it becomes a default set of things and updates the universal classifier so that those things get run when the machines get discovered. Okay. So I have no machines. So now I do my make machines again. Yay. So I pick up my 20 machines. Hey, hey Greg, can you, can you just uh, quickly uh, explain uh, what we did? Just uh, one step. Uh, the when when the machine get discovered, how did you make it uh, automatically uh, choose universal yeah, discover? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, quickly, I yep. I missed so that step. When a machine gets created, mm -hmm. what happens is the system will look at the various fields on the machine and decide what to do for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, in this case. If no workflow is specified, then it will use the default workflow. Okay. If work default workflow is not set, then it will use default stage, default boot env appropriately. Okay. So what happens when a machine, say you actually have a physical machine, my containers are a little different. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the difference, but the, the fundamental function is say I have a physical machine. I tell it to go pixie boot. I don't, DRP doesn't know about it, it goes through and it tries to pixie boot. Because we have the unknown boot ends set to discover, that means it will send those machines sledgehammer, right? There won't be a machine object created or won't, uh, there won't be a machine for object for that system in DRP. DRP goes, I don't know who you are. I will send you the discovery boot end components, which is basically sledgehammer, right? Sledgehammer boots. As part of its process, it kind of does its own initial MAC address discovery and a few other things, uses that to query DRP to say, do you have a machine that matches this content setup, these items? And if it does, it'll try and reuse that machine. This way you can handle cases like, well, it booted with this before, but I replaced the NIC, but these other five NICs on the system match. So why don't I just call you this machine because all your NICs match except for this one. So maybe you had a NIC replacement or the same thing with a serial board replacement and things like that. So it does some math to try and say, yeah, wait a minute, this looks like you already exist. Let me keep you going, okay? Once that goes through, Sledgehammer creates a machine object. By default, Sledgehammer doesn't know what workflow or anything it should go into. And so it uses these, these parameters here, right? the default stage, default boot end, and default workflow to set the parameters on the machine. And then the runner starts running in Sledgehammer that workflow, okay? Got it. In my container case, I'm basically kind of um, doing a similar but fake operation. So in this case, I'm naming the machine. I'm setting a couple of fake parameters so it looks like it's got CPUs and memory and I'm giving it a profile that will let it skip some stages as it goes to universal. But I'm also telling it to run a context. So and this is how we can run things like against switches or whatever in the future. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna run a container named D the DRPCLI runner context, which is just a container that knows how to run a runner. And because I set the base context, it'll always use that runner. When a machine out in the field, like a real physical, these two fields aren't set, they're empty or undefined. And so the system just assumes that it's gonna be a runner running over there. We have a plugin that watches for this and it sees this get created. It then goes through the rest of the, and creates a context, a Docker container, runs the container, starts the DRP CLI process as that machine and then starts running tasks. So it's doing all the tasks, it's just doing it in the container. That 
That way I can have more of them with less resources, right? Um, for this kind of testing purposes. Um, but notice I don't specify workflow. And because I don't specify workflow, it picks up this default workflow to start running. So it, it's a fairly good approximation of a physical machine given the environment I'm playing with right now. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, if I look at this machine, I can see that um, it ran the classifier step one time, and then it ran it again with my Geodis hardware classifier, but I didn't have any actions or tests for it to run. So I didn't do anything, right? So if I look, I can see that I have my basic values for my inventory field, but I didn't pick up anything else other than, hey, look, IPMI is not enabled because, well, it's a container, right? Um, but it did run, for example, the universal hardware tool, uh, part of the classifier, which tried to find a hardware, which is basically what's the manufacturer, what's the hardware type or product name. And then in this case, um, it tried to see if there was a universal application defined, which there wasn't, and then how many RAID controllers it had. So this is kind of a built-in function to universal workflow. It'll try and find hardware specific profiles to add. We have a financial institution that does that where they've built these profiles that are programmatically kind of defined, which define bio settings and RAID configurations that are by hardware type and usage and the classifier just automatically adds them so they don't have to do anything, which is kind of what we're getting to. This is, you just use a, you're using a different scheme than something that's um, product name and manufacturer based. You're doing it based upon CPUs and RAM. Makes sense? Assuming that's what you guys want. I've been marching down that. I haven't heard you guys confirm that, but, um, okay. Yes. Okay. So with that, I, we can, oh, so one of the other things we can look at real quick is we can see that it ran the classifier the second time. Let's see, yeah, this one. So in this case, um, oops, that's the first time. Yeah, so um, there were no tests, so it didn't do anything, so it just went about its merry way. Thank you for listening to our training session. I hope it was helpful. As always, we want to hear from you. Uh, please join our Slack community, ask questions, let us know what additional things you want to hear training on, and we are happy to make sure that you get educated about Digital Rebar. Thanks.